So if you look at uh, quantifying power, and this is what we saw, the dynamic power is a function of capacitive load, the voltage square, and the frequency. So what are the what are the terms that we could do to reduce this dynamic power? Because power is a big component of our system, right? Now, capacitive load is generally a function of the number of transistors that are connected to the output and um, and depends mostly on the technology, right? So it depends on how your wires are scaling, how your transistor is scaling. It is a function of the technology node and all of this put together. There is not much control over the over the load capacitance, and capacitance it gen generally does not scale linearly with technology. That is, if you go from say thirty two nanometers to say seventy nanometers, it doesn't it's, capacitance won't scale down by fifty percent. That doesn't happen, right? So capacitive load scales down. It has a rate of scaling, but it is not linearly propor proportional to the technology scaling. Right, the, the, there's no correlation between the two, okay, but it does does scale down uh, slowly, and more importantly, we architects have no control over it. Right? It's a parameter of the technology. So the one thing that we have control over is the supply voltage, right? So what did we do with the supply voltage? We reduced it. We went down from five volts all the way to one volt. Right, but this was initially when we were working. It was five volts was one. Zero volts was zero, and we we said, the, you know, that's our that's our range, but then given the amount of impact it would have on the dynamic power, we dramatically scaled it down. So we came down all the way from five to one. Now this definitely affects dynamic power, right? This this helps us in reducing the voltage, uh, and therefore the dynamic power, but it also affects other factors. Right. What are the other factors it would affect? One of the big things it would affect is the way we detect zero and one. For example, when it was five volts, keep in mind that sometimes the signal may be say four volts. Right. Even then, we could say that it was a one. Right. Or we could get maybe half a volt. Right. And we would say half a volt is very close to zero. So we'll say that's a zero. Right, that's a zero uh, as a signal. So now, when we reduce the entire swing to just one volt, right? Now, what would happen? We have a lower margin for error, right? So, for example, if you are getting point nine volt, we can assuredly say uh, this is going to be a one. And let's say if we get point one volt, we can say this is a zero. But what happens if we get point five volt? Right, we do. It is ambiguous. We can't say whether it's zero or one. So our swing has dramatically reduced. Now this impacts the reliability of it, right? So errors are easier to to manifest. Some of those is what we call as transient errors, right? Errors where the error is there for a small period of time and then it disappears. So those errors are man will manifest faster, right? Because you know you don't have that much of swing. So errors are more. Now the other thing is, given the power dissipation is still growing, right? Why? Because we got billions of transistors, right? We have we have four four to five billion transistors to work with. And think about it: if you operate all these five billion transistors at the same time, you're switching between zero and one. You can just imagine the power switch, the density on it, right? So you have this two billion transistors going from zero to one and Two billion transistors going from one to zero at any given point in time, the power density will be tremendous and the heat will be huge. There's a huge surge on the heat. So we are we are getting into an area where we are actually thinking of you know switching off certain components that we don't want that are, that are not working and this is happening already in our cores. So if you look at our cores. We are actually saving energy and dynamic power by turning off the clock for those inactive modules. So if you if you see some modules like, for example, the floating point unit or the arithmetic uh, ALU, you know, if you have multiple integer units, some of them that are not active, we can turn it off and we can switch it off completely. There is a technique called power gating. That is, you apply a transistor, right, a, a, a pass transistor in front of this unit, 
and cut it cut the power supply off completely so that will save us uh, a lot of power now you could also apply uh, dvfs this is a very 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 popular technique and you know it stands for dynamic voltage and frequency scaling so what you do is at run time you scale the voltage and frequency you scale it up and if if the if the load is low you scale it down right so most of most of the time a key point to remember here is voltage and frequency are scaled together right so we don't we generally don't scale them separately so if, when, when the frequency is boosted the voltage is also boosted to ensure the signal integrity and the same way when the voltage is reduced the frequency also is reduced now these kind of techniques are already in your processors right if you look at today's processors they will say this is running between a, in a clock rate of say 2 to 2.8 gigahertz that means that dynamically it controls the the, the, the the dynamic power because it can change the frequency from 2.8 to 2. So if the workload is high, it might run up to 2.8. The workload is low, it may come down to 2. It may scale down to 2. For example, if you're just browsing, right, you're browsing, checking your email, it's not necessary that you need a very high frequency, right? Because you are you know, you're reading something or you're working on something. It's not that the processor has to be at its peak efficiency similarly if you're running some matlab code right or you're running some uh, you're running uh, your uh, uh, kind of a, a processor or a system simulator on your uh, on your sigwin or or, uh, or your on, on your terminal then you may expect you may you may want good performance and these matlab code are pretty intensive right they're data intensive they consume a lot of power they they, they so you may want to boost this and this happens automatically more importantly, if you have, for example, four cores, it's not necessary that all these four cores are operating at the same time. In fact, many of these cores are turned off because, you know, some, some applications are not parallelizable. Some of them run well on one core. Some of the important um, uh, functionalities are, can be implemented only on a single core. So for given many reasons, it's not necessary that any given point in time, all your four cores are active. It may be one or two cores are active and maybe two cores are deactive at any point in time. So today we are doing a lot of these uh, techniques, that is we switch off cores, we switch off function units to make sure that we can save power and we can save energy. And this is becoming a very important factor. Now in terms of voltage, there's also a trend that we are moving towards and it's called as moving towards low threshold voltage devices that is we are trying to operate these at the threshold voltage of those transistors right at the threshold voltage because that will bring us down to maybe 0.4 or 0.5 volts and that is also a big research field research area today where components are operating at the threshold voltage further if you look at all these uh, designs where we are turning off um, many of the components and so on people are today looking at an area or an era we call it of the dark silicon it's called the dark silicon because things are going to be pretty dark right that there is no power to it so if there's no power to it it's dark right so we are heading into an area of a dark silicon so suppose you have 15 cores like the one which i showed the xeon processor we may not be able to keep all of them on unless it's you know, it's applied for some very high uh, utility applications or, you know, uh, applications that require a lot of computing power. It may, it may be true that if some of us use, use those uh, machines with 15 cores, we probably will keep maybe 10 of them switched on, right? So, um, we are getting into an era called dark silicon and there's a lot of research going on today to see how we can, you know, boost it we can help it uh, or improve it and so on so the last thing i want to ask here is a problem right this is a problem uh, where let's say we have a 15 percent reduction in voltage and we say this results in a 15 percent reduction in frequency as i said it's always dvfs right you generally reduce both voltage and frequency at the same time uh, and the question is what will be the impact on the dynamic power so we are always interested in dynamic power and if we reduce both voltage and frequency, we can bring down the dynamic power at runtime. 
and that's exactly what we are asking here so we are saying suppose let's say things stay the same between two systems but you reduce voltage and frequency by 15% what is the impact on uh, dynamic power 